Hello everybody, my name is Jason Palmer and I'm a trumpet player and composer. Um, I'd like to thank the ITG for inviting me to share with you all. I'd like to talk a bit about the art of transcribing. Um, I initially got into the art of transcribing in the late 90s when I first heard Studying Brown by Clifford Brown. I heard his solo on Cherokee. And when I heard that solo, I said to myself, wow, I can't believe the trumpet can sound like that, you know, have such clear ideas at such a brisk tempo. And so I really wanted to learn that because I was learning the trumpet and I wanted to learn how the trumpet um, operated. And so I learned that solo, I, I picked it up by ear, I started to try to imitate the sounds and the, the fingering combinations and everything. And eventually I was able to play the solo along with the record. And that led me down a road of really learning how these artists that came before me um, were able to speak through the instrument, um, how they phrase, how they breathe, you know, took breaths in between phrases, and the articulations, and the dynamics, you know, all those, those little subtle things that come out in someone's uh, voice when they speak in, through improvisation. And so, I initially got into Clifford Brown in his style, and then I eventually went into um, Miles' style and Freddie Hubbard, Book a Little, Kenny Durham. Um, and then I think the second solo that I transcribed was a Nicholas Payton solo off of Whoopin' Blues on his record, Gumbo Nouveau. Um, so that was the second solo that I ended up actually learning how to play and also writing down the Clifford Brown solo I didn't write down in the beginning, I just learned how to play it. Um, but the Nicholas Payton solo was the first one that I learned how to um, actually notate and everything. So, so that was a really, really um, important um, step for me. You know, and eventually I started to learn how to transcribe songs and, and chord changes and you know, different other instruments. I started transcribing some Herbie Hancock. And, you know, I say all that to um, let you know that it, all of this helped me um, get to a point where I could really learn the language of the music. And once I was able to do that, I think it allowed me to go into the avenue of composing. And one thing that really helped me um, get into the act of composing is transcribing myself. And so what I ended up doing is I started writing contrafacts, which are tunes based on the chord changes to other tunes. And so I would put on a song that I really like to play along with and record myself playing along with that song. And I would then listen back to what I played. And if I found a phrase that I thought was really musical, then I would transcribe that and turn it into a song. So um, I would essentially just transcribe what I played and develop that phrase into uh, a broader phrase within um, the form of the song that I was playing. And so that was a, a neat way for me to get into transcribing without having the pressure of saying, okay, I just composed this melody, so now what chords do I put underneath it? And so I already had the the, the foundation of the chords based on the song that I was playing. And so the more I learned about how harmony function and like standard progressions and other tunes that were considered jazz classics, um, the more I learned about that, the easier it became for me to create my own chord progressions. But if you're looking for a way to get into composition and you feel this pressure coming from the melodic side, from the harmonic side, you know, you can eliminate that by just starting out writing out contrafacts. And I think um, the easing of me getting into composition that way allowed me to have fun um, composing early on. So I often remind my students, when you first get into transcribing, it's important that you find solos that you really, really like, because it has to be fun for you. And you don't have to put pressure on yourself to learn an entire solo. You can just learn certain phrases, you know, certain parts of a melody or, or whatnot. And so when you do that, you want to take what it is 
that you transcribe and you learn to play, and you want to figure out the function of it, you know, what phrase, what chord does this phrase work over, you know, and then maybe work variations on that phrase. You know, maybe you can change a note in the phrase to make it sound minor versus major or augmented or whatever. Um, and just make those uh, phrases your own. You may want to manipulate some of the articulations of the phrase that was played by a certain person. But this is done after you've learned what it is and you've learned how to play it a certain way. If you can play a certain Freddie Hubbard phrase the way he played it, then try to manipulate it and play it the way that you would hear it. And I think that's the road that you would take to get closer to um, what your original voice would be whenever you go to improvise. And I also equate that idea with playing in the spirit of somebody. So you don't necessarily play exactly like the person you're transcribing, but you're playing in the spirit of what they would be playing. But you're adding your own interpretation of it. And that's what gives us our own individuality in this music and I think that's very important. So yes, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it and I hope you find some inspiration in these words and I look forward to meeting some of you soon. Thank you.